Hello, my name is Julie McDonald and I'm Deputy Director of Nursing at South Tyneside Foundation Trust and I want to share with you my cancer journey. So in May last year, May 2017, I found a breast lump. The same day I managed to get an appointment with my GP and I was referred to the specialist hospital to the breast care clinic with an assurance that I would have an appointment within two weeks. The Queen Elizabeth Hospital is not my local hospital and um, I didn't mind travelling for that specialist specialist care. I was seen within the, in the clinic within two weeks and it was a one-stop shop. So what happened when I went into the clinic, I saw a breast care specialist nurse who arranged a lot, uh, some investigations. So I had a mammogram, I had an ultrasound, I was examined by the nurse specialist, I was examined by the consultant and I had a biopsy. And by the time I left clinic that day, I was told that whilst they needed to confirm it on the biopsy, it was highly likely that I had breast cancer. I had a follow-up appointment um, which confirmed that I did in fact have breast cancer and surgery was arranged as a day case at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital within a couple of weeks. The things I would reflect on in relation to my care were um, the breast care specialist nurse um, was invaluable she was so knowledgeable about um, breast cancer, what would happen next. I had a phone number for her. If I had any questions, I was able to um, ring her up and I did. I rang her up quite a bit and asked lots and lots of questions. I got an excellent information booklet that told me the whole pathway. I wanted to know everything at once. I know some people don't necessarily want that. She coordinated all of my care, arranging the additional investigations I had to have and she actually managed to arrange my surgery around a long planned trip to Glastonbury Festival, which I really didn't want to meet, which I really didn't want to miss. That, that was very therapeutic that I went to Glastonbury and my husband and I were able to um, talk about the breast cancer and what was going to happen next. What was really important to us was being given a time frame for what was going to happen next. So when I saw the GP, I knew I'd be seen within two weeks. When I'd been seen in clinic, I knew when I was going to get the results. I knew how quickly my surgery would happen. And I think um, in the NHS, we talk of targets and all of these are cancer targets. And I've done it myself, talked about cancer targets. When you're a patient, this is your life your pathway, you want to know what's going to happen next. So it's really important that when we talk about targets and not meeting targets or meeting targets, we think about actually there's a patient at the end of that and it's about patient experience. I knew when I went to the clinic at the end of having all of these investigations at the one-stop shop, I knew I was going to be given bad news because I was shown into a room that had a sofa and tissues and asked me how long my husband was going to be because he'd gone back to work. I think it's the non-verbal things that we often don't think about. So I was sitting in that room for about 10, 15 minutes thinking, just come and tell us. And as soon as my husband came back, they came in and told us. So it's not always the obvious things that you think the patient's thinking about. So I had my surgery and um, the good news was um, there were, I had two tumours removed. It, it ended up I had two tumours in the same breast and they were removed with wide margins which means that they managed to get the whole tumour out and it was healthy tissue surrounding it. And they did a biopsy of my lymph glands which showed that the cancer hadn't spread. The not so good news was that the tumours were receptive to something called HER2 and um, the treatment for that is chemotherapy which blocks the receptors. The tumours were also sensitive to oestrogen which would mean that I would need an oestrogen suppressant tablet, um, a hormone suppressant tablet um, for a number of years. I was referred to City Hospital Sunderland for my chemotherapy treatment because I live in Sunderland and I met the oncology nurse consultant and I had a list of questions for um, the oncology nurse consultant and she was just 
so helpful, informative, and I understand not everybody wants to know all the detail, but I wanted to know everything. She gave up her time, anything she couldn't answer, she was able to find out for me. The nurse consultant also explained to me that I, I would lose my hair because of the um, type of chemotherapy. And she explained to me about a charity called My New Hair that works with the NHS to provide um, high quality wigs. And from that I was able to make an appointment, see the hairdresser that um, styled, um, ordered in a wig very much like the colour of my hair and was able to style it. So much so when I went to show my parents the um, wig, my mother didn't even recognise that I was wearing a wig. So that, that was really good to know that I had that before I, I actually lost my hair. So my chemotherapy started in August 2017, six weeks after my surgery. I was really, really anxious about chemotherapy. You hear lots of things and you, you always think it's going to be worse than it really is. I was very worried about the side effects and how I was going to feel. I found out that I would be having a course of six chemotherapies. I'd have, uh, they'd last about one to two hours and I would have them every three weeks. Immediately after chemotherapy, I tended to feel very, very tired and very nauseous and very lethargic, couldn't really plan to do anything and that lasted for about four or five days. Following that, I started to feel better physically, but I had been warned that it affects your immune system and so I had to be very careful about infection, so I had to be selective in what I decided to do when I socialised. And by the third week, I started to feel quite well and that was the time when I tried to be normal and socialise, although I would say it was very gentle socialising compared to what I would, what I would usually do. I started losing my hair after the first chemotherapy and it had completely gone by the third chemotherapy and I lost my eyebrows and my eyelashes. And you know, it wasn't a big deal in the end because I had the wig and that made such a difference. I think if it had been a poorly fitting wig or it didn't look like me, I think I would have struggled, but actually I quite liked wearing the wig, although it was a little bit itchy. It, um, I didn't have to do my hair or anything. A lot of people didn't even realise I'd lost my hair and a lot of people said how well I looked even though I didn't actually feel it. During that first visit to the chemotherapy unit in City Hospitals, the Phoenix unit, I was allocated a name nurse called Maria and Maria got to know me really well and often knew what I needed before I did. She knew when I was anxious, you know, she she could pick up on the things that had happened in between chemos, all of my treatments, speak to the oncologist, um, you know, that was invaluable. Maria went the extra mile. She changed her shift so that she could be on duty to treat us whenever she could. And I really, really appreciated that. I had a dread about going to the unit, but knowing that I would see Maria made it much better. I have to say all of the staff and the volunteers on the unit were so, so friendly and made you so, I'd feel so at ease. Nothing was any trouble. I was given a 24 hour contact number for the unit for any concerns um, that I might have and I did have to use the number a, a few occasions and one occasion springs to mind where I was really struggling to manage the nausea. After every chemotherapy session I was given um, medication, to, you know, just in case I got symptoms and medication to take regularly. This one time I just couldn't get the nausea under control and I rang the unit and within an hour the staff had spoken to the oncologist and um, I had some other medication and felt better within three hours. It was quite amazing that that service is there. I finally rang the bell and the ringing the bell is, um, there's a bell on the unit and I think a lot of chemotherapy units have them and it symbolises the end of treatment and that was, I'd really looked forward to ringing that bell. And I rang that bell at the end of November and my chemotherapy was over. In December, I started radiotherapy, which meant I had to attend the Freeman Hospital every morning, um, every weekday morning for about, my treatment only lasted a few minutes, so I was only in there about 15 to 20 minutes. The traveling was much worse traveling through rush hour. And it was really 
tiring traveling um, but other than that my side effects of radiotherapy were limited to just some local skin irritation and burns. I returned back to work in March and I feel like now I've got my life back, my hair's starting to grow back. I still attend the chemotherapy unit for Herceptin injections every three weeks and I'll have to do that for a year's worth of treatment and I'll have to take the medication for at least five years so my journey isn't over yet. I'll have annual checkups to check that the cancer hasn't returned but do you know what? I feel great and I'm so pleased to be back at work. I think reflecting on my whole cancer journey is how wonderful our NHS is. It's just fantastic. I think um, I think of targets, NHS targets, very differently. I've always thought of them as being imposed and something that we had to achieve. And But actually when you're a patient at the end of those targets, they're very, very relevant targets. My employer was really supportive. I had hoped to work right through treatment, but it was just too tough. I couldn't do it, but the option was there if I wanted to work at home, if I wanted to reduce my hours, you know, that was fantastic. When I came back to work, I came back very phased return and slowly got back into work. It was left to me to decide when I could come back full time. That was quite quickly because I realised I was getting frustrated and wanted to be back in, into it. I think from a nursing point of view I, and, and from a staff point of view, it's the little things that matter. Not the big things, it's people speaking to you, hello my name is. I've preached it, but it really, really, really is important. Talk to the patients, people taking time to listen, people going the extra mile, people finding out about you and what would make a difference. The fact I went to Glastonbury, you know, that was absolutely fantastic that everything was arranged around that. People went the extra mile to make that happen. I didn't really appreciate the role of the specialist nurse and how knowledgeable they are and how they coordinate care and how much information they, they have. And I think I'm just very, very grateful to everyone that was involved in my care and my ambition would be for everybody to be able to have a positive cancer journey like I have. Thank you. Mm -hmm.